Welcome, heathens and witches, to the Horn and Cauldron Podcast. Podcast. Yeah, we're back at it again. A little bit of a break. Um, Part of that was due to an excessive lack of electricity in our house due to inclement weather. Thank you, whoever's in charge of that. Uh, The cursed uh, 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 cult of the weatherman or something. But uh, (laughs) yeah, I'm going to have to do some research and see which gods are weather gods so that I can start uh, leaving them regular offerings. Why why are you doing this to us? Uh, But so we're back. We're back at it again. Whatever. Uh, So, yeah, I'm John Norgrove. This is Julie Norgrove. This is our weekly ish podcast where we talk about witchy and uh, heathen and other occult stuff uh, available on both YouTube and video format on all the podcast networks. So uh, check us out if you're new to us. And if you're not, welcome back. And we're just going to get right into it and save all the rest of that faff until the end. Uh, And today we are doing Imbolc 104 Candle Magic. Yes. So what is this where you get like a big long candle and you're like, let it get ever. I mean, you could let it get ever. like that kind of thing. There's really nothing that says that you can't use like a candle as a wand. Yeah. I mean, practicality is probably that issue. I mean, yeah, I, I'm thinking like a non lighted candle. You could totally oh, sure. use that as a wand. Yeah. <laughs> Like one of those, one candle, of those, let's not guys. If you've, if you've been to like Catholic church, I don't know if these are in any other churches, but I remember in uh, the church that I went to when I was like a real young kid, uh, they had these candles that were like three feet tall. It was like a pillar candle, <laughs> like probably three inches in diameter, maybe four inches in diameter. Yeah. It was like three feet tall and it had like a bunch of occult Catholic symbols carved into it. I don't know what the hell is in it, uh, but they're occult Catholic symbols. Let's not pretend that Catholicism and Christianity are just like a cult that's got super hype right now. But um, so it had like a bunch of occult Catholic symbols in it or whatever the heck that they would light. So like that would make a great uh, wand backslash baseball bat because that would fucking hurt if you got hit with it, bro. <laughs> so, you know. That's for uh, that's for baseball season. Yeah, so yeah. baseball season candles or whatever. I've always I've always loved the like any book that does or or like TV show that does like wizards and shit. But they're not just doing like weird stick for a wand, but it's like other stuff. I remember a TV series um, where the the guy had a wizard staff, but it was just a hockey stick. Oh, you yeah. know. Like that kind of energy, yeah, you know, really like very, very things. Romeo X Juliet, like gun with the word sword written on it. You're love just that. like works. Yeah, love it. Good it enough. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. But that's it. clearly not the kind of candle magic we're talking about. No, mm, no, it's down. not. But you did just give me ideas for future shows. So yeah. that sucks for me or you. I'm not sure which. I don't do research. Um, I just show up here. <laughs> I just show up here and look pretty. So what's up? That's, that's accurate. Yeah, it is. Cool. No, uh, today we're going to be talking about candle magic because uh, in bulk itself takes place on February 1st in the northern hemisphere or August 1st if you're in the southern hemisphere. Um, and that's about halfway between the winter solstice. So Yule and the spring equinox. So Ostara and in bulk in season is like a time to celebrate the coming of spring. So hearth fires, feasting, planting the upcoming harvest, which means like seeds yeah. um, and weather diminishing. Well, looking at you procrastinating gardeners because <laughs> I only put some of the seeds in the ground <laughs> just yesterday. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and not even the food <laughs> seeds. I still have to do that. I'm just... I don't got time for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A whole week and a half of, of weather related issues and no power really, really set us back. Grinds your entire life to us. <laughs> a remarkable stop. It sure does. Got a lot of reading done, though. Yeah. Yeah. So that was yeah. nice. Uh, Imbolc is also a holy day for the goddess Brigid, who is the goddess of like craftsmanship. So that also incorporates <laughs> what we would know today as crafts, but she's also goddess of like blacksmithing and, um, you know, like her, like farm working because that really kind of is its own craft and working with animals and stuff like that. So she's kind of a, or woodworking or, woodworking or brewing or, or leather wine working making. or brewing or wine making. Yeah. Why would you all not consider all of those crafts? Because those didn't come up in my head. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean like, like she, uh, like, 
I, I think that w- when you say like nowadays you would call that crafts, you would always call that crafts. I think the difference is, is that nowadays no, no, you no, no, often no. think about small crafts, no, 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 which no, no, are no. like crafts that what you do I in your mean, house as unskilled labor, as opposed to crafts, big crafts, which is like where craftsmanship comes from. So the act of making crafts. You're not in t- you're not wrong because all of those things are her purview. But also what I mean by what we would call nowadays is crafts. I'm talking like your Michaels, your Hobby Lobbies, your yeah. Joannes, yeah. you know, yeah. scrapbooking and sewing yeah. and 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 doing that creative yeah, those are all, stuff. Those are all those big are all crafts that we're just now, that we're just now doing. As, like, oh, are, do you sew your own clothes sometimes? Well, we used to have seamstresses and now we have way less of them. Yeah. So like, yeah. you got to do that. Like, you know. are you doing scrapbooking? Well, we used to have traveling writers who would go around and do a patents on nobility for half a shilling or yeah. whatever the heck. And now you got to like put your family oh my gosh. in a book. We just saw on <laughs> we were watching bbc i was america talking about a night's tale by the by today. so boom well but that reminded me we were watching bbc america today and they were doing like a section of like uh antiques road show and this lady and her husband brought in this painting that is a painting that's like from her family so it's like her of like her family's painting handed down over generations of her family from I, I don't know when, but like some time that's old. it's medieval times. It's it's quite old. Yeah. Uh, based on the art style, we're probably looking at like 1600s or so. Yeah. Uh, and she was like, oh, yeah, they had 20 kids. And yeah. it was like a painting Dude, of the lady husband, and her husband wife, and like five kids. of the kids. And it and in this painting, they're like sitting around a table and they're like holding cherries by the stem upside down, which is just not how you would hold cherries because the cherries are too like, heavy. Yeah, and there's not, like a ta- book at the about bottom. Old art. old art is weird art. Yeah. However, the height of old art and this art had it <laughs> is that in the old days, I'm going to guess here uh, as a non expert. <laughs> all right. Every painter was capable of doing one face. You perfected one human face and that was it. Because every man, woman, and child in this painting had the exact same face, including a baby who had an adult face, yes. but was just small. I, yes. I don't, listen, I'm no artist. I do abstract art. It, the idea of painting or drawing a face is like profoundly absurd to me, right? Totally beyond my skill. But I do know, baby face is not just smaller adult face. I know at least that much because I have eyes in my head. Yes. Now, to be fair, you could see the family resemblance amazing. between the people who in had this it. painting yeah. and this woman. You yeah. were like, yeah, that tracks. Yeah, that's her. 400 years yeah. that tracks. I that's definitely 100% see her that. family. Totally. Um, yeah. So anyways, um, I don't know what that has to do with candle magic. Yeah, it, oh, it does. Crafts. Crafts. Ah, uh, bring it. Yeah. So, also, like yeah. poetry and healing, those are all crafts. So think of uh, guilds and those are yeah, all. Yeah, I don't know about poetry as a craft, too. but. Yeah. Comment in the comments. Do you think poetry <laughs> is a craft? Yeah. I think it's an art. And there's I, a difference. A craft is a thing you do with your head. Like, you wouldn't call painting a craft. Painting is painting an art. Painting is a craft. No, oh, no, no, no. You know no. what? It's, it's both. It's an art. Well, what about painting a house? Well, then you're that's a craft because you're doing like a labory thing. Uh huh. I think that like would an actor be called a craftsman? I mean, there's an actor's guild. R- yeah, a, the act of owning a, a guild is just a fancy old timey word for union. Yeah, right? and I'm that's aware, just so I'm that aware. way you didn't get like murdered by people. Yeah. So like, so like, I don't think that because it was a guild makes it a craft right i'm not that's i, I mean, don't know that you can ever make that like, argument I, 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 but but uh, but what think <laughs> of the term right a blacksmith is a craftsman whereas yeah. an actor is an artisan i'm gonna say why not both i, 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 I i'm gonna totally, say why not both because i, think, I see the line that you're drawing but i don't i, I think the idea of it. both i think the blurring of the line that that you're observing is only because modernly we use the word craftsman and artisan to represent anything we fucking want it's artisanal beer or it's or craft beer, or craft yeah. beer i mean i think that those words have like lost their distinction with yes. time as english has slowly worked its way to a single dulcet tone of insanity but like yeah i i i feel like those things are technically different <laughs> like old timey wise yeah yeah you know what i'm saying 
I do, but I'm still going to go with why not both? Because I definitely think that but there also is also maybe a it's a skill thing. Maybe like if yeah. you're maybe if you're like mid AF at it, you're a craftsman. But if you're like banger at it, you're an artisan. Uh, I, I track with that. Yeah. Right. Or, or yeah. whatever. Because what do you what, what's below that? You're a um, what do you call that when you're like new to that shit? It's like a apprentice apprentice and then you're so, like journeyman yeah and like then apprentice, i don't know journeyman. maybe that's what it is maybe it's apprentice yeah. journeyman craftsman artisan maybe right yeah. so is it a tiered thing these are the questions these that we will not questions. answer here because i do not know yeah we're not answering those you get to think about those yeah. but tell us your answers. yeah what's your opinion I'm gonna um it. so uh if you want more information about in bulk in general, because this is 104, we have three other episodes that you can listen to. There's episode yeah. number five, The Basics, um, which also goes over Brigid as a goddess. Uh, there's also in bulk 102, which is episode 31 that talks about cleansing, purification, new beginnings, and it gives you a ritual. Uh, and then there's in bulk 103, which is the nine herbs charm. That's episode 50. Um, that's a charm that dates to 10th century, uh, like Nordic history and goes over various healing and magical plants like mugwort, plantain, bittercress, betony, chamomile, nettle, apple, chervil, and fennel. Now, Another thing about Imbolc is it's considered the time for candles. It falls around the same time of year as Candlemas. And um, Candlemas it probably comes from the traditions of Imbolc. They're probably intertwined in that way, where this is the time where you would make and or, especially in modern times, bless your candles for the coming year. Sure. <clears throat> so we're talking about candle magic because 104 is all about talking about different types of candle magic. Making. Craftsmanship. That is also a craftsmanship. Yes. Yeah. Um, now. I don't know that you make like artisanal candles. I, in my you mind. You totally artis can. I feel like. No, no, no. I, like, I feel like the term artisanal cr candles just like feels weird. My dude, have you seen those candles that people carve and they have like little yeah, they're petals? Like loopy, they're like loopy those petals. Those are oh, so are they, cool. No, no, I know. But are they called artisanal candles? I don't know what those candles are called, by the way. I have literally only ever if like If I were to be doing like SEO for an Etsy shop, you I would, would totally use artisanal I would artisanal totally use candle? artisanal. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But also I would use handcrafted or craftsmanship or something like that. I would use all of those buzzwords. Yeah. Craftsman Tin Fields <laughs> Yeah. You know? Wilbur Crafts Craftsman ti ti Titus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stop. That was that was not good. Okay. Uh, let's get back to it. Shh, so okay. Shh, candles. Right. Candles aren't as <laughs> Everybody heard. It's fair. It's, uh, on, it's, <laughs> it's not live. This is recorded. So it's, it sucks for you. If this is the clip that goes viral. <laughs> yeah, right? Oof. <laughs> Oof. But also, though, yay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, maybe seal that and take me out of context. Let's go. So candles aren't as ancient as you think, uh, actually. <laughs> That's. Before candles, people were just like, ah, it's dark. Everybody stand perfectly still. We'll just wait until that thing comes back up into the sky. It's too dark to move. <laughs> there probably was a time where that was it, but we're not going back that far. Um, in about 500 BCE, the Romans started using tallow to make the first dipped candles. Oh, mm, boy. That was probably a smoky. Awful they yes. were. Um, so that's really not that far back. We've talked about a lot of like really, really old yeah. things. So like, let me rattle off a few deities whose worship is older than candles. Uh, Isis. Yeah. Aphrodite. Well, you use lamps. Odin. Right. Thor. Yes. The earliest surviving candles are actually from the Han Dynasty, China, and date to about 200 BCE. So that's not even that old. Um, that's less old than the Romans thing. But these are like candles that we've found. And the candles from that we've found are from whale made from whale fat. Yeah. And prior to this. Which is crazy because you use whale oil for lamps. It's my understanding yes. that whale oil is like the best possible oil for lamps, like the least amount of. Yeah of soot or whatever it is and like the brightest amount of light or some nonsense like that. Yeah. So prior to candles, um, people used oil lamps where a wick rests in a container of liquid oil. And these were used for both ceremonial and for practical purposes. Yeah. So when I was researching this episode, yeah. I came across a ton of websites talking about the history of candles and they're like, candles are ancient and we've been using them as long as we've been people. No. Have we been using fire to light things as long as we can totally. remember? 
absolutely yes totally, yeah. but not actually candles and i'm not I know like that, what we think of as yeah candles. not what we think of as candles um uh, modernly i'm not saying that I'm not trying to nitpick between the the light from the wick of an oil lamp and a candle, but what we think of candles modernly are far different yeah. than oil lamps. Well, and and oil two, lamps are not easy the to two come that, by The two that you here. just said are tallow and whale fat, which yeah. you, ain't, you ain't never had a candle like that, right? I mean, like, unless you're like a craftsman or whatever. Uh, but like now we use waxes, right? Yes. So... Yes. Yeah, so by the 13th century, candle makers, who were also called chandlers, would make candles from kitchen fats that people saved up. And they, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. There was a whole chandler's guild. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, chandlers. It's just all of the, all of the. Uh, all the friends uh, energy. The friends, like, <laughs> memes just slamming into yeah. my head. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's why I included that word. Chandlers. You're welcome. I'm just going to give a moment to pause for be, everybody to think about this. You could be chandlers, but no, no, no. Put a chut in there. Makes, yeah. it, makes it fancier. Yeah, yeah. So um, these chandlers <laughs> would make candles from kitchen fats that people saved up, and they often sold candles uh, in their own shop. So sometimes they were like traveling people, and they were like, you know, what we would think of as like a traveling, like, salesman like a door-to-door -door salesman yeah um and they'd be like hello With i can make candles do you have any fats and yeah. people would be like why yes make me a candle uh and sometimes they had their own shops it just kind of depended on what it is that they did yeah where um, when what place yeah and these fat or tallow based candles uh asterisk i know that fat and tallow are different things i'm just simplifying here for those of you thinking about writing that in the comments don't do it yeah uh, or do it <laughs> Engagement is good. <laughs> so tallow-based candles were cheaper to make, but they were very smoky. Yeah. Now, beeswax candles, we've had basically since they started deciding to try and dip candles. However, beeswax is a substance in ancient times, uh, or just in general, ye old times, that was expensive and not easy to come by. So it either yeah. had to be imported. Well, but it can or... also be used for so many, like, Consuming beeswax to light your house is the height of luxury. It is so let them eat cake as an old timey thing, because you got to think you have to use a lot of beeswax to make a candle. One and yeah. two, like that much beeswax, you could like waterproof your barrels. You could uh, you could use your beeswax to seal countertops or cutting boards. You can use beeswax to, to make salves to and make potions. like salves and bombs and as a thickener. And like the whole honeycomb beeswax is like a good is like a very ritzy snack, as well as like destroying the wax in a hive could potentially like mess the hive up too much. Although like, uh, I don't know how old timey, but I know like the old English beehive, the wicker basket beehives were meant to be like smashed at the end of the season, yeah. which is fucking bonkers to me. But uh, um, like beeswax has so many more uses. Like as a person who does like not, not fancy, but like woodwork and stuff. Yeah. Uh, like I think about it now, like if I was in a situation where like the only access to wax I had was like either buying it from some dude for like corn or some shit or like or like uh, what I can get out of my own beehives. There's no way I would use that for a candle. Like, get fucked, dude. Yeah. It's like way too, it's, it's way too valuable for like a bajillion other things. Yeah. Well, you and know? one thing you didn't mention is that beeswax candles burn very cleanly. So if nothing else, the clean of the, the cleanliness of the burn, because yeah. they weren't smoky, uh, made them very expensive. Oh, so sure, yeah. only the upper class and the church could afford to use them regularly. Um, and this didn't really change until the mid 19th century. Uh, when the Industrial Revolution made molded candles affordable for most people. And then it also changed the way that wicks were made because wicks no longer had, were twisted. They were able to be woven on a machine, which is how, well, candles are made now. Yeah. Uh, and it made them far more accessible. So until basically like 150 years ago, most people didn't really use candles unless they were a rolling in it or B um, they were using them as timekeeping devices. Timekeeping candles were incredibly popular mm -hmm. in the metal late dish nail in the candle set that time. Area. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. And you just train yourself to get used to that. Like ting. Cause it makes like yeah. a pretty distinctive high pitched tingle sort of a noise. Yeah. So like you can, yeah, totally, totally, totally. Yeah. 
So um, even though the way that we know of candles today is a pretty modern idea, the idea of using fire or oil, blah, fire or oil for a lamp or for a ritual, um, religious purposes, magical purposes, that isn't new. And we oh found goodness. that throughout the world. Probably as far back as we were just like, what's this? What's this liquid that's all slippery? And somebody was like, set it on fire. It's going to be fucking rad. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, so you well, know. We, we just watched this thing. Uh, I just like recently found this dude on YouTube who makes like old timey Greek stuff like from scratch, like which is the most yeah. bad shit ever. Uh, and he makes uh, like Greek style oil lamps. Yes. Uh, which is made out of like terracotta. He pulls out of his like clay uh, low fire terracotta style that he pulls out of his like backyard. Uh, and then he boils them in milk to make them waterproof or yeah. like like liquid proof. <clears throat> so that way he can put oil in it and just use as like a bit of wick for it. Yeah. And that's like remarkably useful. Yeah. Honestly, do that first video I watched. I was like, this seems like it's going to fucking barely <laughs> do anything. And this guy's like, eh, bing, bang, boom. Look at this whole ass light in this room with this with this uh, lamp. And I was just like, man, damn, that is fucking rad okay cool. yeah yeah like, yeah um i i really want to get like a like a like an oil lamp uh kind of situation there, yeah. there we was have some, an oil lamp oh yeah but i mean one of but the, like, like a more like old a fancy old time like a fancy old time yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, we have like a modern one. well not modern like a early 1900s like early 1900s yeah early early 20th century yeah uh oil lamp yeah. um so because so not that much older than us you know <laughs> as people born in the late 20th century yeah <laughs> my favorite way to say that <laughs> me too right so because the concept of a candle is so modern there's not a lot of old timey references to candles i mean there are plenty of old timey spellbook references to use an, a fire for a thing yeah um but not necessarily in the form of what we would imagine as a candle spell yeah. so the earliest spellbook reference that i could find uh dates back to 1973 yeah in this book it's called candle That's fire mid 20th century guys that's still late 20th century yeah that's less than a decade before i was born yeah um so uh it's called candle fire the technique of candle burning it's by lana de jong and it's 43 pages so we are not looking at a big book here that's, um and this yeah. was like not not like that's mass market essay, published dog. yeah this was like not my mass market published it's like a zine um so in this book the author recommends using a total of four candles during a magical ritual there are two altar candles, and those uh, they recommend to have be white taper candles. There is one astral candle. This represents the person doing the ritual, and the color of the candle is to be determined by that person's zodiac sign. Oh my god, what are the colors for each zodiac? Okay, they didn't have all the colors for all the zodiacs, but I looked for Taurus, which is me, and it said blue, and I was like, lies. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> blue? Blue. What color was Aquarius then? I, it, I, there was not a picture of that page. That's crazy. Yeah. That Taurus was blue. Yeah, yeah. I looked at the colors and I was like, none of these make sense, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they're like two colors, like, like two signs for each color. No. Kind of a vibe or whatever. No, no it it's did not. Did you see what, what Capricorn was? No, that was not on there. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, otherwise, I would have literally written them all down yeah. and shared them because it yeah. was it was I'm very interested in that. If you have uh, a copy of this book, let me know, please. <laughs> so, genuinely, that's fascinating. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, listen, if Taurus is blue, this book is replete with lies and I'm very excited to learn them. <laughs> So I do include in all of these episodes uh, a sources spot, and there is a link in the sources that takes you to a place that is selling one of these, and they have screenshots of some of the pages, and one of the pages is the astro is the yeah. the astrological sign colors and you can see if yours is listed there uh but i saw taurus was blue and i was like not even yeah, shut it all the way down shut it down yeah uh, okay and then there's also one offering candle and the mm. offering candle color is to be determined by the purpose of the spell sure now the colors that it looked like it recommended for the spell purposes are like pretty spot on for what we today would consider color magic. We actually have a whole episode talking about color magic. Definitely check that out. So fun definitely episode. check that out. Very yeah. fun episode. Um, and it goes over all of the correspondences for the colors there. Um, so 
it's safe to say that the idea of using candles for a spell as opposed to a ceremonial or a mood lighting kind of thing really took off in the late 20th century uh, during the Wicca boom, since most of the books that talk about candle magic date to the 1990s. Like the earlier books, like there's yeah. plenty of books afterwards. Um, and if you're interested in that uh, color magic one, that's episode 61. A lot of candle magic has to do with color magic uh, as opposed to your just using a candle. So um, I've compiled a, uh, a sort of a, a an overview of the types, the different types of candle spells that you can do. So before we get into candle spells, um, always practice fire safety drinking game for y'all. I feel yeah. like it's been a while since we've had that, yeah. um, but always yeah, practice proper don't, fire safety. Don't do dumb shit with don't fire. Don't do dumb stuff with fire. Well, like you are not fireproof. Um, and like most of the shit you have is not fireproof. Yeah. So, like, be smart about it, my dude, um, as well as like, I mean, l let me tell you, let me tell you a story from my childhood about not being safe with a candle. <laughs> um, so you remember when you could get that like wax beads or you just like pour it into a jar, put a wick in it, add some potpourri, bing, bang, boom, you got yourself yeah. a candle or whatever. So I remember one time as a kid, uh, we had got we had like had a set like that and we had filled this like big jar with like wax, but we had like mixed some potpourri in it, you know, in like big chunks of dried or uh, plant material. Yeah. Um, which like just off the top of your head, you should know that that's a stupid idea. Uh, Those but, are flammable. Yeah, right. But we didn't think that we put that much in it. We didn't think it was going to be that much of a problem. And we lit the candle and it was like, oh, the candle smells nice. And like everything was fine for like a while. Right. And then the candle was like, guess what? What if everything was on fire? And it very rapidly became a rocket engine as all of the material <laughs> inside at one layer or, or, you know, like distributed on the top due to melting wax was trying to combust and also wick the, the, uh, the wax into it to burn whilst generating enough heat to melt <clears throat> more wax further down, which allowed more potpourri to rise to the surface, <laughs> acting like solid fuel <laughs> in the sort of engine that they used to lift the space shuttle to space with. So that was a fun one to deal with. Uh, if I remember correctly, we had to leave all of the doors and windows of the house open until the wee hours of the morning to get all the smoke out. That's so... That's wild. Yeah. 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 I remember in the, like, in the like late 90s, like very early 2000s, like Y2K times, um, it was really popular to have like gel candles. Oh, and those gel the candles gel were candles sus, were so weird. Uh, I remember it was like a whole, it, it started with like candles that looked like fish tanks, right? So it's like blue, clear gel that's in this like candle thing. And the candle thing, you know, the candle receptacle is clear also. And then there's like little plastic fish in there. So like I knew a ton of people that were like making these candles because it was so easy to make and so easy to get the stuff. And just like, I remember a friend told me they made one of these candles and then they were like, and then we burnt it. And that was a mistake. These candles should not be burnt um, because basically they burned the gel candle and the fire hit, like got to the point where it was like on one of the goldfish, the plastic goldfish. Oh, geez. And it, it was wasn't like, just like a wax goldfish. No, oh. no, it was plastic oh. because people were just like DIY in this oh. stuff. And it was like burning. Remember plastic. how filled with microplastics we all are? Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's never hashtag never forget. Yeah. OK, anyway, so practice <laughs> proper fire safety, folks. Um, <laughs> Uh, so candle spells. Candle spells are basically as difficult as you want them to be. So it's as simple as taking a candle, charging it with intention, lighting it, and then visualizing your intention coming to fruition. The candle can then be snuffed out later or allowed to burn out. Basically, everything is a variation on this. Mm -hmm. Most of the candle spells we see in books heavily rely on the color of the candle to power or augment the spell. Again, check out Color Magic episode 61, super fun episode, um, if you want to learn more about what colors to use for spells. Yeah. Um, now, first up is 
carving a candle. So you can personalize and add extra intention to a spell um, by carving a candle with sigils, words, or other symbols that are related to your spell or your desired result. Mm -hmm. uh, carving a candle is easiest done with an object that has a needle-like point. I know this sounds obvious, but like, trust me. <laughs> I have tried carving a candle with a variety of things yeah. and a knife just kind of doesn't really do it oh as God, like so dangerous. as like uh, fun as it sounds it's it's like 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 ooh well, magic when you, when you see when you see those people making speaking of those like flower candles again we're bringing those back up those like big elaborate flower candles that are like dipped in like a hundred colors so when you yeah. like cut it and do the thing so they use a knife Yes. Right. Which I think is where like the idea of like using a knife for this is. I'm going to be super real with you. You want the like octuple double secret to carving a candle, right? Is you want to use a V groove chisel from a wood carving set. Oh, that's a great idea. Those are the best I because it makes like a nice didn't tight put cut. put that in there. Huh. Yeah. A V groove chisel from a wood carving set and not like a fancy one. I'm like, go to go to like the biggest, cheapest box store you can or like online and get like the most discount set it doesn't yeah. matter the quality because it's designed like it's barely designed but they're designed to cut into wood right when you get the super cheap ones yeah but those are like perfect for wax yeah right as well as you want to keep like not hot water but warm water. Yeah. So like I would say like maybe in the like 130 to 150 degree range, like warmer than your body temperature. Well, and it depends on your wax. Like you have beeswax, you can mess with it and your body temperature won't melt it all the way. Yeah. Some of these softer waxes like soy wax, your body temperature will melt it enough. Yeah. So like at those you want a lower temperature for your water, but just like keep your keep your tool in the water. To yeah. Like heat up the metal or whatever and then like do some carves. And if it starts getting too hard, just like clean it off with a paper towel, put it back in the water or whatever. Yeah. Right. That's like the best way to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't want it too hot or the, it'll run. And then it kind of ruins the <clears throat> thing that you're yeah. carving. Totally. But totally. Yeah. Yeah. So you could also use like uh, needles. So like upholstery or embroidery, yeah. leather needles, carpet needles, like a big, thick, sturdy needle. Yeah. I particularly like the one that has like a diamond type point on it. I think that that's an upholstery. Needle. It's an upholstery. Needle, it's one totally, that you yeah. get in like a needle multi pack where they have like the curved needle and all the weird ones. Yeah. Um, a toothpick will work in a bind. Uh, clay sculpting tools. I really like the one that has like a wooden handle and the top and the very end is just like a tip. Yeah. Um, it's just like a tube to a tip. Yeah, basically. Yeah. A sharpened pencil will do it, and so will a ballpoint pen. Yeah. Uh, when I was much younger, I had a very specific ballpoint pen that I just used for it. And the ballpoint pen didn't work because it's all filled with wax, right? Uh, but that was what I used, and it worked so well because totally. it was like a really pointy ballpoint. It's like a fine tip ballpoint. Yeah. Um, and also, when you're carving, like not only does heat help a little bit, um, like, definitely be careful like don't light a toothpick on fire and then blow that out and then carve a candle that does oh my not god work. that's so dumb yeah, yeah. Do but that. if you're using a metal object try heating it up slightly yeah um you know you could even do the whole eyeliner thing where you like light the you know light a light a lighter and then just like foop, 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 pass it through the flame a couple of times and then I do not know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. The eyeliner trick. When you have a pencil eyeliner, you basically have to use a lighter to heat it up ever so slightly before you use it, like almost every time. Huh. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of them, you don't need it as much, but yeah, you pretty much need to do that to yeah. like, I don't know. It's not just like. Melt it a little just bit. like uh, like a lipstick, just like. I mean, I've definitely had Football. had I've definitely had eyeliner pencils Whatever. like that. Never um, I, don't, I don't know eyeliner. <laughs> if I've yeah. worn eyeliner, it's because somebody else put it on my face. Not like against my will, but like <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to do this. Hold my head still and you do it, you know, <laughs> like for a costume or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, yeah. Know, I don't know how any of that stuff works. It's, it's an it's a it's a nightmare trying to put eyeliner on you. Yeah. Um, and also when you're carving, don't carve too deep. A few millimeters is more than enough. Yeah. You're just looking to like basically like scratch the surface. Well, here. yeah, you're going to score it in. You're not trying yeah. to like you're not trying to make it like like a deep carve where you can like inset a color or some shit like yeah. that, you know? Yeah, especially because if you are carving it, you're going to get like little pieces coming out. 
and they're going to be kind of difficult to deal with um, the deeper you carve. <clears throat> so, oh, and to carving candles, if you are using a dipped candle or if you're using like the the um, beeswax sheets candles or yeah. anything like that, if your outer layer and you don't have to do the like, it's a bunch of different colors of dip. Like just get like a regular and like I've done this a bajillion times, right? Where you get like a regular white taper candle and then either dip it or if you can't dip it because you don't have the equipment to do that. Like use a colored candle and drip yeah. the colored candle wax over it or whatever. Uh, so that way you have an outer shell of whatever yeah. you're like intentional color is. Yeah. And then you're carving down to the white to get and you need like a like a super thin layer. In fact, there are several brands of like cheaper candles. Oh, yeah. That I actually get, like, candles prefer around Halloween that are like that are, that are like that way. blue or black or red yeah. on the outside. And it's like the thinnest layer of color. And then the inside of the candle is white. Those are the best because then when you carve it out, your symbol like pops. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So like yeah. that's the best. Yeah. You can find a lot of candles like that, especially around Halloween time. Yeah. They have it's those great like because they're like the, they're like the cheaper candles. Yeah. Right. They're like, look, how, look, look at this red candle. It's so cheap. The center of it's white. And you're like, but it makes it better for what I'm doing. So thank, thank you. you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Use that to your advantage if you can. Yeah. Um, so next up is dressing candles. Sure. Yeah. So dressing candles. Get like a paper cut out. You know how to do that where you cut it out of paper and then you make a little outfit out of it. I don't like I don't know that I technically qualify as old enough for that, but it's definitely a thing that I've done like a bunch of times <laughs> is like paper outfits and stuff on a candle on paper people yeah yeah maybe on a candle i don't know i was a child <laughs> and a weird one at that it's obvious <laughs> mm, so yeah probably so dressing candles is uh, a process where you anoint the candles with oil and mm -hmm. sometimes herbs mm -hmm. no no paper dresses but if you put vinegar on it then it's a nice balsamic Got ready to summon a salad over here. I mean, I'm just saying, right? You got herbs and oil already. You need a balsamic. That is a delicious salad candle. I mean, you could use vinegar also. You know, vinegar does have magical properties associated yeah. with yeah. it. So, you know, that works. Um, <clears throat> so to dress a candle with oil. Don't use ranch. Yeah, don't use ranch. Uh, use only a few <laughs> drops of oil. A little oil on a candle goes a long way because you're not looking to dip this candle in oil. Oh you're God. just looking That's to get like so remarkably a bad idea. Yeah, my dude. So you want to rub. So use a couple of drops, rub the oil all over the candle. And then if you're using herbs, you can roll the candle in them or you can just like sprinkle them on the candle. I feel like rolling them in herbs is a really cool idea. But but in practice, I need you to think about how many herbs you need to roll that candle. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot. And then you're going to have a lot left over. Yeah. And then what do you do? You don't put those back into the jar. Oh, my God. Well, they're greasy so, because you just put oil on that fucking candle, my guy. Yeah. It's a terrible idea all the way around. Yeah. So I highly recommend that you take like a pinch sprinkle. and sprinkle it. Yeah. Um, and much like with the oil, the, a little bit of the herbs goes a long way. Oh God, yeah. And also you want to make sure that you don't I, have an, so I many herbs that fire is going to happen. told a story about trying to launch my house into space using NASA grade 80s technology by trying to make a solid rocket engine out of wax and potpourri. So like, like, let's be smart here. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do what child Jonathan did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for the oils, you can use pretty much any food grade oil. <clears throat> but I found that olive oil works best. Some people choose to use essential oils, which are generally not always food grade. Um, and they sometimes mix them with a carrier oil like olive oil. The reason yeah. why I'm saying food grade is it's because it's something that you already have and it's less likely to be, you know, like really dangerous. Like don't dip your candle in WD-40 or in motor oil, right? I, like that I, is listen, not a good listen, idea. Listen, if your spell requires you to dip a fucking pillar candle in 10 weight 40. I need you to give me all of the details of this spell because you are doing some absolute Megatron magic right now. Listen, yeah. Optimus Prime needs your help and you're a wizard, Harry. So yeah. I'm here for it, but it seems remarkably dangerous and 
stupid toxic. Right? Yeah. The other reason why you want to use an oil that like you might already have your pan a little too hot and it might get a little smoky is you don't want to be breathing in like mad, bad fumes, my dude. Yeah. Right. You don't need to be like wafting that. No. Burning double. WD forty, my dude. Damn. I was writing this, and I was like, somebody out there is gonna tr- is not not necessarily because they listen to us, but like somebody out there is gonna be like, oh, oil dressing a candle, and then like use just WD forty <laughs> or like Pam spray or something yeah. like. Also, that's hey, probably better. You but... do this when the candle's not lit, hasn't been set yet. I'm gonna say it now. Oh yeah. The reason why I'm gonna say it now is because is if you're gonna lit. Pam yes. your candle, which is just <laughs> an affront. <laughs> To every god I have ever heard of or studied. <laughs> I, I'm just putting that out there. Pam in your candle, my dude. You can't believe it's not blasphemy. That's what that is. All right. Uh, but if you're Pam in a candle and it's lit, that's a flamethrower. Don't do that. We yeah, know that. We were all children yeah. at one point in time. Yeah. Obviously, all of these things that I'm talking about are with the candle unlit. Yeah. <laughs> I can just imagine lighting a candle and being like, OK, we have a few seconds to drip oil and roll this in stuff before it gets real messy in here. <laughs> I mean, listen, there's a reason why containers have to say in 14 places. This is hot when you make it hot on the stove. Kelt Supreme. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. You're right. You're so, right. Yeah. So use a first. food grade oil. And if you choose to use an essential oil, you're. Don't use the whole thing. That's a lot. Essential oil is also probably not a great idea to have burning because a lot of them are made with um like chemicals to yeah. strip the oils out like it's a very weird or to thing, stabilize so. it or to make it more blendable for whatever bloody purpose it's used for you know like oils for like uh scent oils for candles yeah. are different than scent oils per- for perfume yeah or whatever so like when in doubt use olive oil yeah <laughs> uh the herbs are typically chosen to help amplify the spell yeah. And they can be ground. Um, some people choose to leave leafy herbs whole and always use dried herbs. Um, I've found that ground herbs works better, whereas leafy herbs kind of look nicer. The leafy herbs are going to like stick off in chunks. And again, for fire safety reasons, yeah. a leafy you herb is going to be rare. harder to, yeah. you know, is going to be easier to like catch on fire. Uh, so we don't recommend glitter dressing a candle. So dressing a candle in glitter. Yeah, because, but that's because glitter, glitter is plastic, is plastic. <laughs> and we yeah. don't you generally don't yeah. want to burn plastic. Well, And even if you're getting like that aluminum style glitter, uh, like that stuff is aluminum on one side for shininess. And then the other side is plastic or both co- the, or the coating of it is plastic. And that plastic acts as the carrier for the colorant. So that way it's shiny and purple or blue or pink or red or orange or green or whatever fucking color you got. So like that's dangerous yeah uh as well as like like often when we glitter stuff we heavily glitter stuff which glitter can burn right um and you definitely don't want like tiny metal embers floating yeah. around your house it, it seems like a whole danger yeah so yeah, yeah. so steer clear stay away from that keep with biodegradable natural natural items. stuff yeah, yeah. Uh, and then also keep in mind that using herbs or oils can also cause the candle to smoke or possibly catch fire so always use a fire safe container practice fire safety and of course don't forget you probably have smoke alarms think about that before you do that yeah uh, because nothing ruins the vibe of a ritual as to have your, your smoke alarm going yeah, off. Yeah, that's, yeah. Ah, it's the call of the gods. The smoke alarm. Don't yeah, do that. That's a sign. That's a sign from the gods. Your spell's not going to work out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, you overcranked it. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, right? So the practices of carving a candle and dressing a candle you can combine together um and then you can choose to combine these with the next piece um or the piece after that which are the actual types of spells themselves so all of these things kind of build like like building blocks like legos so um first up we have one and done time lapse spells so the idea behind a time lapse spell is that a candle is both powering and activating the spell So the candle is both the thing that is giving the spell its power and 
by the candle being lit or by the candle going out, typically going out, you know, burning the full candle. That's what activates the spell. And these spells are best done with smaller candles because the intent is to let the candle burn out. And what you don't want to do is have a spell that's meant for the candle to burn out. And that candle takes hours to burn out. Uh, you don't really want to be waiting five, eight, 10 hours for a candle to burn out. So the best types of candles to use for these sort of things are like birthday candles. They also come in a variety of colors. Uh, tea lights, those little like um, ones in the metal tin are fantastic for this. Votive candles are slightly larger or um, even short taper candles. Um, you can get these ones that are kind of like really popular in like new age and metaphysical and magic shops where they come in a variety of different colors and are a couple hours long and yeah. they take a cut or a couple couple of inches long, they take a couple hours yeah. to burn. Them, them red candles we get from the Asia Mart are um, yeah. fantastic for that because they burn off in like uh, maybe two hours yeah. or so. And they're like a good diameter. They're like about as, they're about the size of a number two pencil. Honest. Yeah, yeah. So, you know? um, so also, yeah, you can find those at like, um, you know, like ethnic food marts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So, the, the local one that we go to is called Asia Mart. Yes, so. it, that's actually the one what it's called. Yeah. So the place when is rad, dude. Yeah. So when you're doing this type of candle spell, you uh first want to get your your space ready. Um you know, like whatever you're doing for your spell. So get your space ready, get your candle ready, and then you're gonna wanna charge the candle with your intention. And as you're doing that, you wanna make sure to envision that your intention builds over the burn time and then activates the spell once the candle is burnt out. <clears throat> so basically you're going to do this intention like, I want to achieve X, so my spell is X. So rather than saying I want, obviously we always use the, the current version of that. So I am not this will, but this is um, going to happen sort of a thing. So this is going to happen. And then you build on that, whether that's building the intention in your mind um, or whether that's using ver words for it. Like if you were wanting to be as rich as say <laughs> using words for it. Yeah. Using like <laughs> out loud in your words. mind, you're using just colors and and geometric symbols. Yeah. I mean, well, everybody just like a little different. You just like red so, circle, <laughs> blue triangle. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's just like, eh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So either you can Green use this in a way where your spell uh, ramps up over the burn time, like if you want to be say as rich as scrooge mcduck you start by thinking about how you know like an extra hundred dollars is going to do for you and how rich you would be to have like an extra ten thousand dollars and then finally by the end of the burn time you're swimming in gold like scrooge mcduck yeah also if that works let me know because now i'm curious um or you can use that to sort of amplify the 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 time bomb that is that spell, right? So at first it's like a small thing. Your attention remains yeah. the same the whole well, the, time. Well, the, the one and done can kind of come across in two different directions, the way that I look at it, right? You can either have, you can either have the spell entirely be the candle. Like I, like I, like I made 10 of these candles. I'm gonna light one today, walk away, do or like, don't walk away, stay in the room. Keep an eye on your candles when they burn. <laughs> Uh, but like sit down and like read a book while that candle's burning and like that's just doing magic over there. Side magic, if you will. Yeah. Um, uh, you can also do light the candle the whole time it's burning. You're doing magic. All right. As well as you could do like instead of it like b ramping up as the candle burns. Right. You can light the candle and as the candle burns and it activates the spell, you wait until right as it gutters itself out. Right. Right. As it like fails out. That's when the spell like activates. So the entire use of the candle, both the time and the energy, the candle outputs is used to like fuel the spell yeah in quotes tm you know yeah so once so but it's still that one end done yeah exactly so like once you've charged the candle then you obviously you light it um and in general i recommend to like watch the flame focus on your intention and you can do that for the full amount of time the candle is burning yeah or you can choose to stop once you feel maybe, like maybe it's gotten maybe don't, the thing. Maybe don't just stand there staring into a bright light source. I feel like that's probably bad for your eyes in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> so be careful about that. You yeah. Know? And then say your intention so that when the candle burns out, uh, your spell is activated. Um, and 
think about this. I wonder so like, if you could carve like if you're take welding and you were to just like like stamp runes into the like back of your welding stick or something to that extent and then like as you consume a welding stick you cast magic into yeah. either the creation you're creating or the like or like just like consuming the energy to weld and the like focus right because like welding is one of those things i imagine you're like dialed in you know yeah you're like in that like creative zen so while you're doing that like you're actually like casting a little bit of magic yeah. like behind brain Absolutely. or whatever so that's maybe a little shout out to my welding friends out there yeah of a thing you, know that you might you be are. able to do you know who you are but i just thought about that and maybe it's a good idea yeah, so, absolutely. You could totally do that. You know, um, or, you know, like the birthday candle thing. Yeah. Like that's an easy one because yeah. they're small. Um. <laughs> Curse children by by putting runes on their birthday candles <laughs> or whatever. So think of this type of spell, like lighting a stick of dynamite in like a in like a Looney Tunes cartoon. Right. So you light the wick by lighting and charging the candle with intention. So you light the wick of the cartoon dynamite by lighting and charging the candle with intention. And while it's burning, it's continuing to, that it's wick like is continuing down. to like go, yeah. right? And then the, the cartoon dynamite explodes when the candle goes out and that activates your spell. Yeah. Or like blows your bill backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Or like gives you, you know, like the blackened char face, like Wiley Coyote. Yeah, where you're just like... Yeah yeah, 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 totally, totally. It just backfires. Everything's like pulled back in little spirals. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's also long term candle spells that you can do. Now, these are great for activating an intention multiple times over a longer period of time. These spells are best done with larger candles because we want to get as much usage and burn hours uh, as possible. So pillar candles, devotional candles, um, you know, like those ones that you can get in the supermarket that have like, they're either, you know, like white or red wax. They're in a tall glass jar yeah the like, sometimes uh, they have a the like jesus candles yeah like the jesus candles yeah you can find them with like funny things on them and a variety of different there's all kinds of ways that you can have those now oh yeah um also well, you can get those straight with spells written on them yeah and like and like you know all kind of such like that yeah like, and also other types of jar candles uh, taper candles are all great for this because yeah. you have a lot more burn time associated with it and when you're doing this type of candle spell you basically like before, you want to get your space and your candle ready, and then you charge the candle with your intention, just like before. Uh, but this time, the slight difference is that you are envisioning that each time you burn this candle, that the spell activates your intention. So this is really a great way to like renew something. And each time you light the candle, you reflect on the candle's intention and envision it coming true. So this is really good for long term goals. Totally. So I think we talked about we talked about this in one of our episodes, and I cannot for the life of me think of which episode it was uh, because it was not in the notes. It was just like an off the cuff thing. But like if you are trying to set like an intention to do something like we just recently, you know, like past the new year and resolutions are like a big thing. And it's so hot right now. They're not anymore. Uh, most people have probably fallen off their resolutions. Oh, I think now. most people fall off but, in like like, like a couple three weeks, weeks or yeah. something. Yeah. But totally. like if you really are trying to make like a life change or something like that, or you want to help to motivate yourself to do something over a long period of time, this is a great way to do it. You charge your candle with the intention of the thing. So if your thing is like, I want to like, for instance, I want to do yoga every day that I don't have to work in the office, right? That's literally a thing that for me. So I could take the candle, charge the candle for that. And then every time I do yoga, um, before I start doing yoga, I light the candle, I reflect on this intention, and then I have the candle burning while I do yoga or while I'm getting ready to do yoga sure. and then I extinguish it when I am done and then I rinse and repeat every single time. Yeah. And then when the candle is done, I can choose to stop doing that or I can choose to like get a new candle and do the same thing. Yeah. This is really good for candles that have like a super long burn time. So if you're trying to like, you know, uh, <coughs> get yourself to do a specific thing, um, this is a really, really good way to do it. Yeah, totally, totally. Well, and if you make your own candles, Right. Whether you're like a uh, dip in candles or um, pour in candles to like 
carry on that spell, you could essentially take whatever remnants of the candle that you have, remelt it. Yeah. With the new wax <laughs> to like keep the chain of the magic running, right? Or if it's a jar candle, you can just like get the like little bit of wick that's in the bottom mm-hmm. out, you know, the little like metal thingy that's in the bottom that holds the wick out and put a new one in there and top that up with fresh wax. Yeah. Right. Which Or would, just like, like place a new candle in there. Or like place a new candle depending in Depending on what the jar kind of looks totally, like. Like totally. I have one that that's like a, like a for cup. tea light candles, even yeah. though this wouldn't, even though this wouldn't work because the candle doesn't burn for a long time. If you were, because the outside of the tea light candle is metal yeah if you were to use like a pointy thing not like to cut through the metal but to just dent it in with your symbols or whatever yeah. then you could just replace the tea light every day yeah and so then, you the, could then the do vessel this. is the spell holder yeah you could do this attaching your intention to the vessel and not to the candle yeah and the like, candle just acts as like yeah the, the candle fuel. is just the power yeah right so you could absolutely do that it's the power yeah the, the the container has the power yeah so um yeah you could totally do that absolutely um you could also use a candle to seal um so using a candle to seal a spell is a good way to combine the concepts behind candle spells and like jar or like packet spells sure. uh, in this type of spell you're charging the candle as you would for a one and done spell but you use the wax drippings from the candle to seal the jar or whatever the thing is that you're yeah. using right and that activates the intention of both the candle and your jar spell if you're gonna drip wax on something one have that thing set down on a surface Two, have that surface be fireproof because wax is hot and three keep your hands away from where it's dripping uh most people shocked to learn how hot liquid wax is yeah right and that results in dropping stuff or make it a mess or any sort of a thing like that so be safe um i make candles so i'm i'm fairly used to it <laughs> but like but like be safe about that because you can hurt yourself as well as like cause damage a uh, hot wax um in the right states is intrinsically flammable without a wick depending on the yeah. type of wax you're using and how hot you've gotten it so yeah be careful yeah and you could also use like a uh, wax sealing sticks for this sort of yeah thing those little too. wax chunks that you use yeah for with wax like a little sealing. wick in them oh. yeah they're so cool yeah you can totally use that um now there are specialized candles too speaking of wax sticks um and so for specialized candles we've got a few different things here you electric candles these are often shunned in the pagan community but they can be used just as easily for that's, candle spells that's this is what i'm going to say electric candle being shunned by the pagan community basic misunderstanding of physics does it emit light <laughs> does it consume power it's the same thing as a candle my dude is right? it putting out energy? Yes. It's just not l- literally fire. Well, it's just not. Um, yeah. Like the only thing it's not doing is heat. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're that sassy about it, use a bloody incandescent light bulb, an easy bake oven. You can make a brownie with one of those motherfuckers. So like, you know what I'm saying? Those were hot as shit, yeah. dog. Everybody as a kid has touched that stupid, tiny little metal brownie tray, burned the shit out of their fingers because they were impatient about eating a brownie baked with a light bulb can inside of a plastic container. Another reason why we probably have microplastics in our body. Yeah, can confirm. Uh, but whatever, those things were tight, dude. They were, absolutely. Easy bake was the yeah. coolest toy. <laughs> we're actually pretty hype on electric candles. We, we have, use a buttload of electric. We have candles. a lot of them in the house. Yeah. They're um, like rechargeable LED candles. They're great, man. Yeah. It yeah. gives Look like for, a nice ambiance without all the like work of candle making. Yeah, I recommend looking for USB charge ones as opposed to ones that take batteries. Oh, yeah. Batteries are expensive. Yeah. And uh you'll go through batteries a lot faster than yeah. you thought you would. Yeah. So and you don't um, want to have to hold on to those until you can find a proper place to recycle your batteries. Do not throw batteries in the trash. Recycle them like an adult. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, we use the rechargeable LED ones and they're great, man. And you can get them like we have ones that just look like whatever. And then we have ones that like look like candles. Yeah. Um, you can also get them where the outside is wax. That's chaos in my yeah, mind to me. Yeah. We don't have any of that kind. Um, but like we have a set, a little th- triple set that's like totally RGB. 
Yeah, so you could like choose so the, the colors. Like the color of make. the candle will be like super choosable or whatever. Like there's so much you can do with it. And the benefit of it being a plastic candle that's just LED like that is that if you used like an acrylic paint or something, because LEDs don't get hot, right? If you use like an acrylic paint or whatever the heck on the outside of the candle, not to like coat the entire candle, but just to like draw your symbols or whatever, yeah. then you're like money dude yeah exactly so these candles are really good for people who either can't burn candles don't want to burn candles or who are traveling um, yeah. so they're really good for that and of course like john said you can totally paint them you could even like scratch off the paint and paint new stuff on them totally. uh, but don't carve them don't dress them <laughs> like don't don't do that don't oh my god no don't put oil on that <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and you can use these for one and done spells by letting the candles battery charge just run out. Yeah. It's really cool because for one and done spells, this means that you don't have to worry about babysitting the candle. You don't have to babysit it. You could and you can run it for whatever. We had a candle up there while we had power out that ran for like three solid days, which it is was, way longer than those candles are normally supposed to run. Yeah. So I don't know, whatever. That thing was feeding off of hate for the lack of yeah, power. Yeah, it was bizarre. Um, yeah. And when you're when the cat are, if you're doing a one and done, then when the battery runs out, just like cleanse the candle magically and then reuse it, like charge it and reuse it later for a different spell or yeah. for whatever. Yeah. You know, it can be used oh, for decor. Speaking of cleansing something magically, whether it's an electric candle or a wax candle, don't get water on it. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, it's not great for the candle and it, it messes up the wick and stuff. Yeah. For even like a wax candle. Yeah. As somebody who's left candles outside. Yeah. And for a long term candle spell, just electrically charge the candle between uses or, or of course, if you're if it's battery charge, add new batteries is needed. And then you only have one candle to go for your long term candle spell and you don't have to worry about like getting new ones. And then that's just your candle that you pull off the shelf every time you need to study for class or whatever the situation is. Yeah, you just turn on that candle. That's actually a great way to have like a like a, a repertoire of long term spell candles. Yeah. For different spells that you're just going to like you like you got I'm going to grab a candle with these symbols on it, like pull it off the cupboard or the shelf or whatever yeah. out of the cupboard or off the shelf or whatever. And then just like put it next to whatever you're doing. Turn it on. You don't got to worry about it, right? The benefit yeah. of an electric candle, set it and forget it, to quote the great Ron Popeil. Um, so you don't have to like like babysit it or keep an eye on it, because if you're having a fire candle, keep an eye on it. Damn, I can't believe that has to be said, but like keep an eye on it. My yeah. Dude, fire is fire. Yeah, you could also use the electric candles as um, like devotional candles for deities or spirits that you're working with. This is a really great way to do it. You can personalize them in a lot of ways. You can even print out like a picture of the deity that you're, um, you know, uh, honoring with this candle and then just sort of like make it into like a loop and put it as a sleeve around the electric candle. Totally. Like you can do whatever you want with it. It's There's a lot of a lot. Uh, so many ways that you can use these. I cannot say yeah. enough how much I love. It's electric so great, candles. dude. Yeah. Um, so next up is jar candles. So scented jar Gems. candles, you know, like the ones that you see in every single store and they have 500,000 cents. And when you see them, you're like, I'm going to smell all 15 of these scents. Yeah. Um, and like, judge them. Like whatever farmhouse scented candle, like nonsense, whatever those, you know. <laughs> yeah. Tobacco I mean, and hydrangea. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, so many of those scents, you read it and you're just like. What and the then fuck you, do you think that means? Because I don't know what I think that and means. And then you smell it and you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't also, smell a lot like of those smell like bloody candy and diabetes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't so, see that sweet, that sweet scent like that. So Ooh. these candles are actually a really great way to add color and scent to a spell. Oh, totally. To supercharge results. Oh, totally. Well, so, and they're like bloody everywhere, dog. And they're inexpensive. Yeah, yeah. And man. there's a ton of variety. Yeah. So I, we recommend primarily choosing the candle based on the scent, since that's going to be the the largest thing. most jar candles are like just white candles yeah. and maybe the jar is a different color but also if you've got a jandal like yeah yeah, yeah you heard me uh if you got a jandal that's like in the right scent but like not the right jar color or whatever the heck um you like don't paint the jar don't affix anything to the jar because the jars often get hot 
right? Yeah. But you could also like set that on a colored plate of yeah. some sort of fireproofiness, right? Because a lot of jar candles are like heat. They get hot. Yeah, you Dude. could also. I have a cauldron that I used for candle making that I like yeah. pour candle into. And that thing gets like bonkers hot. Yeah. Right? And that's designed for you to make like creme brulee. It's like, oh, do creme brulee cauldron. Ugh. Yeah. Like that's what, that's what I got it from. So you can like bake that thing at like 500 degrees and it'll be fine. Uh, but it gets like hot in a candle, not 500 yeah. degrees, like maybe yeah. 250. Uh, you also, uh, you can use like a Sharpie to write on the label if you want to add some extra oomph. But in general, leave the outside of the jar candle alone. Yeah. And just choose it based on the scent and make sure, make sure it's a scent that you can deal with. Yeah, some of, the, <laughs> some of them are a lot, my dude. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I've seen people do uh, if they get a jar candle, but like obviously like the jar is going to get hot. So you can't like set it on, you know, you can't paint on it or do nothing on it like that. What they'll do is they'll use a Sharpie and they'll uh, draw their symbols on the lid of the jandle. Yeah. So that way, we because you got to take the lid off and set it aside yeah. to do the candle. So when you take the lid off, like the lid is like unsealing the spell, you know, like don't read from the book kind of energy. Um, so you open the book and then you're able to do the jandal magic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> jandals. I can't. Yeah, it's a jandal. Um, so next up are pre-made <coughs> and charged magical candles. Store-bought magic. Yeah. Store-bought magic. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. If yeah, you can't do it yourself. What? Yeah. If you don't know how to make fine. a candle, don't. One, don't get into it. It's an expensive hobby. Yeah, or if you don't want to. Let me tell to, you yeah. how expensive that hobby is for me. Yeah. Uh, but also, it is one of those things where you're dealing with, like, hot, burny liquid. So, like, it's yeah. dange, boys. Yeah, and these you know? candles are typically more pricey, but that's also because literally more is going into them yeah. before you buy them. Uh, because they're already pre-charged with magical intent. They may have herbs or other accoutrements to add to your spell. They're really great if you want to add extra power to your spells or if you want to support specific creators yeah um and always beware if you are if you are purchasing a candle like this especially from uh you know like a shop beware of unsolicited messages from the sellers especially if they're promising you guaranteed results for a spell these can often be scams yeah yeah uh, uh spell or uh pre-spelled candle or jandal can be used for like added bonus but like like for obvious reasons it like nobody selling these should be able to claim 100 pasundo efficacy yeah right so there should be no guarantees uh they should always be like this shit's on you though it's your magic uh or whatever the business version of that is uh and if they don't do that and they're like hundo pasundo that's sus yeah, also For, like mad obvious reasons. Yeah. Right? Also, I, I think it needs to be said most people that are making magical candles and selling them oh, most people are good. Are actors. good. Yeah. But there yeah, are good, a few guys. bad actors, yeah, and that's totally. how to tell. Unsolicited yeah. messages guaranteeing results or saying that they're the only ones that can help you and then asking for money. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> big red flag. And then lastly, on our list of candle candles, our tour of the candle world, um, our specialty molded candles. It's blue cheese, uh, like uh, black mold, like, uh, you know, whatever those turkey tail mushrooms, like any of that kind of stuff. A mushroom isn't a mold. That's a fungus. Yeah. Tomato, potato. <laughs> yeah. So you know what makes it real funny is that you can grow those two things on the same plant. Did you know that? No. Yeah, you can grow tomatoes and potatoes on the same plant. <laughs> what? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they're close enough that you can grow potatoes underground and tomatoes above ground on the same plant under the right conditions. That's insane. Wow. Science is a nightmare, man. It is. Look at the ruby red grapefruit. You can thank radiation for that. Yeah. Yeah. Science is a nightmare. <laughs> uh, so specialty molded candles uh, come in a variety of shapes and sizes and colors. They're really good for spells that are very specific in nature. Yeah. Uh, and they're also a good way to find expensive statues for deities or other. Oh, sort my God. Of there's so decor. many cool candle spells. Yeah. We have a mold for a. Uh, um, is that an Aphrodite mold? Yeah, it is. Yeah, we have an Aphrodite mold to start making candles with that I have not used yet. The silicone that the mold is made out of is like 
very soft. So I'm yeah. like, Ugh. that may be a one time. That may be a one and done, my dude. I'm like a little trepidatious about it, yeah. but uh, I am excited to give it a try or whatever. Yeah. But like, yeah, dude, you can get like all kinds of stuff. All kinds so many of things. stuff, my dude. Yeah. And keep in mind that these candles generally don't burn evenly. So you well. always want to burn it on a large wax proof surface. Yeah, man. I can't tell you how many times I've got like a candle and that's just like, well, it's a cool shape, you know? Yeah. And, then, and then you, uh, then you burn it and you're just like, oh, mistakes. Yeah. That's a, to- that's a whole mess. Or it burns for like five minutes and then gutters out because the wick inside of it's just going like, like side to side yeah. or whatever the heck. Yeah. You know, any of that kind of stuff. So like I get it. Dude. Candle making is definitely an art. So. It is definitely a craft. Both are true. Yeah. Things come, and, true. come and bring in, bring that one full circle. Yeah. Um, so that is our tour of candles. Um, we use candles in, well, a whole bunch of different everything, ways. everywhere, all, all, the all time. of the ways that yeah. we have described here. We've we got every kind of candle we described. We've got candles. We've got elandrels. We got regular candles. We got beeswax candles. I have the stuff to make wax candles, rolled candles, soy candles, scented candles. I have uh, like. 35 pigment colors or 40 pigment colors yeah. to color candles with a uh, pigment. We have, a, I think, a few candles that we made in our Etsy shop still. We might still have some Etsy Maybe. shop candles. I need to make more and I'm just lazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, candle making. I have a, a like, well, now two candle making pots because it's gotten out of hand. Um uh, but I have like candle pots to like make candle and I use an old like uh, crock pot. Uh, you always double boil your wax so it doesn't scorch or nothing like that. Um, and we when I started making candles, we were using uh, like standard candle making soy wax, like not like cheap stuff, but like good quality soy wax and like scents and st- and stuff like that. And I've moved almost entirely over to like 100 percent pure uh, relatively locally sourced, like Northern California, locally sourced uh, beeswax. Yeah. Uh, just because it's a higher quality product. And I would rather make something nicer than something less nice. Yeah. Right. And I buy it from a dude who owns like a buttload of beehives and does <laughs> yeah. like the like Central Valley run for crops and such. I also really like the smell of beeswax candles. Yeah, they're like gently sweet, it's but like not overpowering. Sweet. And and to be fair, man, you know, I've had a lot of trouble with scenting candles. Yeah, because like you have to put in so much scent sometimes to get a scent on a candle. And it just like feels wrong to put that much additive in it. So I'm not super into that. Yeah, once you make a candle and you realize how much scent has to go in it to make a candle, at least from our experience, right? We are not candle professionals here. Oh my goodness, So as no. like candle amateurs, yeah. we were like, wow. Amateurs, if you will. That's... <laughs> Totally derailed that. You're welcome, everybody. Yeah. That's like a lot of scent to put into yeah. a candle I'm not for us. super hyped And on we that. were just like, ooh, we don't want to keep doing that. Because, yeah. Because, uh, yeah. yeah. Whereas the pigment that I use is like little wax, like little hyper pigmented wax yeah. flakes that I got. Um, and you use like a very small amount. And that's like very, yeah. very dark. The purple is like the tiniest amount possible to make purple. And everything else, it's just black. Um. Yeah, yeah. But also <laughs> we like save a lot of our candle drippings and then remake them into new candles. We have just a wax. So we have like house. a drawer that all the old wax goes into. So a lot of our candles are kind of like an odd color. Yeah, there's like a weird gray or <laughs> you know, brown it's the color. color. It's the color of the uh, of the paint water. Yeah. Well, it's the it's the overflow Play-Doh container where yeah. you pick up all the Play-Doh crumbs and it just becomes like a weird color or whatever. Yeah. See, for me, that's the that's the paint. That's the paint. Yeah. Cup. Yeah. 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 You know? Well, I mean, for me, it's definitely wax because, I mean, you see what we do with those. I, I they do, all become yes. sort of like a purpley grape. This is because I use a lot of I make a lot of purple candles. Yeah. Um, As purple being my like favorite color. But um. yeah. And then I just like filter the wax. I just use like a fine mesh sieve. Yeah. To get particulate out of the wax, you know, like a bit of char from the wick or whatever the heck. And then I have like several different kind of wicking material. I have like different grades of um, 
wick as well as like wooden wicks. A uh, secret that I've never fully figured out is w- the wooden wicks that I have. But like sometimes they work. So whatever. Yeah. Um, and we also save uh, the jars uh, that we're like very into. You yeah. have like two jars. Um, I have two or three jars. I've got a cauldron and I've got this like heavy like this glass is like a half inch thick. It's like the heaviest jar imaginable. And I bought it at a thrift store yeah. with like a half dead candle in it already. Um, that it's just such a nightmare to work with, but it makes such a big candle. It's a very impressive candle. And it's yeah. a it's an impressive jar. I really like it. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, man, like we use candles for everything and we use like our electric candles are the ones that we probably use the most often. Yes. Uh, but Although those ones are primarily for ambiance. Yeah, they're ambiance And candles. not so much for spells, yeah. although we, I have definitely used them as the, like, focus and powering for a spell. Um, but I don't do that as often. Yeah. Because well, we don't really, ambience. we don't really own, like, spell-specific electric candles. Yeah. Just because we've, like, only just recently gotten to a place where we have enough electric candles to like do what we want, like to make the living room and like altar space the way that we want it to look. Yeah. You know, (laughs) because Um, like many of you, we want to have like an impressive looking sitting room library. Oh my God. We have so many electric candles. Candles everywhere. Yeah. Electric candles. That's the way to go. Yeah. Well, and we just got, uh, grab your, grab your thingy. We also just recently got these for those of you, um, watching on YouTube. It's Um, like, so imagine like an old timey, um, like candle on a on like a the little plate with a ring on it so you can hold it in your hand like this and be like, wow, well, I'm going out to the the outhouse or like check on the chickens yeah, or whatever. You're like you're like, the winter is here. Come child close. Yeah. We have to huddle for warmth. Yeah. Uh, except for this is a uh, LED and it will not keep you warm, but they last for a super long time. They've got a bunch of different settings in brightness and they're like yeah. really nice. Uh, they're called uh, the brand is Wick um, by Gray Pants. Uh, we are not at all affiliated Associated. with we them. We found them, we at, found them uh, at a bookstore, at the bookstore a local we, bookstore. And, and we, we were like, each had to have one. do we want these? And then while we, we while we were waiting for our coffees, because it's a bookstore attached to a co- uh, coffee shop, while we were waiting for our like coffees and breakfast, like two storms ago, four storms ago. I don't remember. Whatever. <laughs> um, we were like, we're like, oh, like, let's look at this bookstore. We saw these and we're like, these are pretty smooth, dude. They look quite tight. And then we were looking at books and we were just like, oh, there's some books. And we both bought like two books and one of these. Yeah, candles. we spent like it was way more than so we thought. expensive. But the oh purchases were entirely worth it. And also it like supports small business. Yeah. Um, which we love. But um, yeah, so like we're very into electric candles. Yeah. But we also use regular candles yeah. All the jar time. candles, I hand roll beeswax candles like constantly. I'm actually down to like only one left in like my house stock yeah. of candles, which means that I need to like get my stuff out and like pour a bunch of candles and like do all the candle work. Uh, and that's normally like a two or three day process for me yeah. to like get everything ready. But then by the end of it, we generally have like 10 to 15 candles and that's not even accounting my just store of candles that's like uh my little red ritual candles that i get from the asia mart because i love those candles uh and like i don't i'm not even like a red color person but i love those candles yeah i have a set of black candles that i got from a halloween place i got a set of purple candles that i got from a a thrift store yeah uh so like i'm i'm definitely like one of those people who like if, if i'm in a place and they got candles on a good sale and i can like pick it up and like feel that it's like a not cheap quality yeah. wax. I'm buying that candle. I'm a big. I love candles, dude. Me too. So me too. I don't normally dress candles before I do a spell with them because I'm usually doing multi-purpose candles. Totally. Right. So totally. I usually have like a candle on the altar that I use 
for like spell work and it's usually different every time. Yeah. Um, and if I want something that's going to be like a one and done situation, I have a whole like huge like box. Like if you go and you get like a box of like tea lights, they're very inexpensive. Oh my God. So yeah. like if I'm doing a one and done kind of thing, I'll use a tea light for it, but I'm generally not adding stuff to it. I'm generally not dressing them or carving them mostly because I'm lazy about it. And can I do that? Yes. Have I done it? Absolutely. Yeah. It's very cool. Oh, you're, just but, using the, you're just using the candle for the sympathetic heat. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but our rolled beeswax candles are often decorated with runes or intricate patterns or like that candle over there that I started burning uh, the first level of, of Super Mar of, or, of, super, um, of Mario. No, Mario Bros, not Super Mario yeah. Bros, but the original Mario Bros. <laughs> yeah. uh, just because I had like a bunch of tiny scraps of wax and was like, I wonder if I can do this with it. Yeah. Um, and I did. Yeah. So, yeah, like you like you could do like uh, you can do any of that. Like, honestly, you know what? I'm a big fan of you're going to dress a candle. Just put rocks around it. Yeah. Get like choose your color and choose your symbolism with rocks and put those rocks around the candle, not in, but around the yeah. candle. And then like like that. And it's just the wax is going to flow over the, the rocks if it spills out. And if not, like the rocks are warm by the candle. Bing, bang, boom. Magic. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, we, we use a uh, lot of candles. We do. We're we do. like a big candle people. And I mean, like we literally just got done talking about like not having power for a week. Whereupon candles was like. That was our. What's up? Yeah, that was our light. Yeah. We were like reading uh, books by candlelight, <laughs> old timey style. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We were reading books like it was 2162. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, we there is a spell that there is a jar spell that I wanted to mention that you did a while ago that I that I've always thought was really cool. And that's um, so we drink a, a fair amount of Underberg. Underberg is a bitters. The German digestive bitters. Yeah. So you generally it's the best stuff. If and you're comes, like a big beer drinker or sausage eater. I mean, the way that it was described to me in craft beer was like, are you eating a bunch of sausage and drinking a bunch of beer? Like somebody who's probably not paying attention to their health and eating enough vegetables, have an Underberg and your stomach's not going to hurt the next day. Um, and it's just like herbs and anise and burning. Ba basically, every time I have a stomach ache and I have one of those or I feel like bloated um, from eating too much yeah. uh, and I have one of those, I feel like almost immediately they're, dude they're they're fantastic straight so magic Underberg you just keep them in the fridge they have like a like, tremendous shelf life yeah so they come in like tiny bottles it's like a one drink serving right you have a little bottle of, you know i'm gonna go yeah so they come the in these video. little tiny bottles and um we did a jar spell one time and i don't remember what the jar spell was for but we did a jar spell one time and john used one of these bottles for his spell and he put the 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 thing that you would put for the jar spell in there. So he put all of his herbs or whatnot into the um, into the jar, into the tiny little Underberg bottle. And then on top of that, he put a candle, a fairly small candle. Yeah. And then lit Literally, that candle. Literally, like a, only a little bigger than a birthday candle. A half a yeah. red Asian Mark candle specifically yeah. is what I use. So, but like these are, if you're watching this on YouTube, these are an Underberg. You can see how like small that is. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, the things like only what, like, what's that? Like maybe two and a half, three inches tall and like maybe three quarter inch diameter little glass bottle. And they're like glass bottles. Uh, and it was great because I was just able to I just like melted some wax to wax it down to a rock so it wouldn't fall over. Uh, and then when I after I filled it with my stuff, it's got a quite wee opening, like an eighth inch quarter inch, no, probably eighth inch opening. Um I was able to put like this stuff in a rock and, you know, uh, oils and little tiny piece of paper with some stuff on it folded up or rolled up or whatever. Get that in there. And then I melted wax over the top of it. And then I put a candle over it. So that way, every time I lit a candle on it, it would like recharge this. It would like redo the jar spell. Yeah. As well as at, when the candle burned down, like once the candle got real low on the jar, I would light the candle and then make take another bit of like think of it like birthday candle style, take another bit of birthday candle and just put it over that candle until it started to melt and then press it down and hold it there until it's set. And yeah. I had that going for like damn near a year, I yeah. think. 
Yeah. So it was like fantastic use. So that was like a little candle jar spell action. Yeah. And we're we're adding like kind of like a one and done, like a long term, like a ceiling. It was thing. like reusable one yeah. and done almost. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Very so cool. yeah. So we use candles in a lot of different ways and we hope that this episode gives you some uh, ideas for how you can also use candles in your magical practice. Totally, totally, totally. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, whatever. In bulk 104 candle magic. That's right. Um, it's not on the screen, so I was just like, nah, I don't know what's happening. You're like, I don't know what's happening. Uh, but yeah, so like do candle stuff, but be safe about it. Uh, whatever. Bad transition. We would like to thank our patrons. We would. <laughs> We're yes. going to bad transition into thanking our patrons. <laughs> uh, they're used to my bad transitions because they've listened to all of these and most of them are terrible. Uh, <laughs> the transitions. Not, oh, not oh, my the God. Patrons. The transitions. Yeah, not the patrons. They're you the guys best. are great. Yeah. Me, not not great. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm a monster. <laughs> you get used to it. It's whatever. Um, so shout out to our patrons, uh, Alan, Miranda, Helena, Alexa and Panda. You guys are the best and you're keeping us doing a little better each time. If you would like to join our Patreon, we're on patreon.com slash nerdjive probably is how that website goes. Yep. Whatever. It's nerdjive on Patreon. You'll find it. The links are everywhere that links could possibly be. Or just go to nerdjive.com and then go to links. And it's got all the links to all the things that you could possibly think about links about. Um, and that's where you get our Book of Shadows pages. And uh, we're we are in the mode of transitioning our patreon to being significantly more like we're looking at changing some we're stuff up. changing some stuff up but but any change that we do is basically just going to be like more stuff and less money for any of you guys yeah so that's essentially what our plan is but exactly how the more stuff and less money thing cracks out is um honestly primarily a function of us just sitting down at the same time and talking it out and like we just have not had time to do that i've been like gardening and chainsaw stuff yeah uh and like yard work stuff so i just have not had a chance to like sit down and really hash yeah. that out uh this week but w like look forward to changes on that improvements is really the best way to say that um but yeah, the Patreon's cool. And we have like a Discord where we just like chat about like whatever all the time. And it's super fun. So uh, yeah, shout out to our patrons. You guys are the best. Uh, and then to that end, uh, if you are listening to this on a podcast network, we have a YouTube video for this. So you can watch us on YouTube to look at our faces or get links and stuff that way. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or you discovered us on YouTube, you can listen to this on whatever podcast network you have. They come out plus or minus a day or two between the two of them. Um, so, you know, th those will always come out around the same time. Uh, and uh, we will, you know, whatever. Catch you guys next time for yeah. more of this. This has been a ton of fun. Thank you for hanging out. I'm John Norgrove. This is Julie Norgrove. This is The Horn. And Cauldron. Podcast. Podcast. And we will catch you guys next time. Oh, like and share and all, whatever that YouTube shit we're supposed you to You know say. what you're supposed you to do. You know what you're supposed to yeah. do. I don't need to say that. Uh, and we will catch you guys next time. So stay magical, folks. Yeah. And don't forget, breathe in self-confidence and breathe out self-doubt.